The normal distribution, otherwise referred to as the Gaussian distribution, is central to a lot of statistical analysis assumptions. In this video, I will briefly go over the fundamentals of the normal distribution and give you an example. When reading about a normal distribution, you probably came across a graph that looks something like this. This histogram is a frequency distribution that resembles a normal distribution. The y-axis represents the relative frequency, whereas the x-axis represents a certain measure. And because of its distinctive shape, it is often referred to as a bell-shaped curve, since it looked like a bell shape when plotting a nonlinear regression line as shown in red. A normal distribution occurs when many random factors interact on a certain measure, and this creates variability. And most of the time, these random factors offset each other, and so most values will be recorded at and around the mean value. The mean value can be seen as the center point of the normal distribution. Rarely though, some random factors will work in the same direction, and this will push the values further and further away from the mean. The majority of values will be centered around the mean with less and less values recorded the further away the mean you go. So notice how a normal distribution is symmetrical and the width of the curve relates to the standard deviation of the distribution. The standard deviation, abbreviated to SD, is a measure of the spread of data in the distribution. And within a normal distribution, approximately 68.3% of values will be within one standard deviations relative to the mean. So if you add one standard deviation to the mean and subtract one standard deviation from the mean, 68.3% of the values in the distribution will be within those two values. Additionally, approximately 95.4% of values will be within two standard deviations relative to the mean. And nearly all of the values, around 99.7%, will be within three standard deviations relative to the mean. Now let's take a look at an example of a sample that resembles a normal distribution. Here is a frequency distribution of the height of 1,000 children aged 18 years old. Here, height is measured in inches. Notice that if we superimpose a regression line on this histogram, we can see that there is a normal distribution with that characteristic bell-shaped curve. And the reason for this is because height is a measure that is determined by various random factors. And these factors can include genetics, diet, environmental influences, hormones, etc, etc. So, the majority of children in the sample are measured near the average height of the sample. The middle of the distribution, remember, corresponds to the mean value, which in this example is 68 inches. Of course, some children are much shorter and some are much taller than this, but not as many as those in the middle. The standard deviation of this sample is 2 inches. So this means that if we add the standard deviation to the mean, which equals 70 inches, and if we subtract the standard deviation from the mean, which equals 66 inches, we can predict that 68.3% of all data points lie between these two values. And if we repeat the same, but do this for two times the standard deviations, either side of the mean, then approximately 95.4% of children will have the height between 64 and 72 inches. So to sum up, the normal distribution, otherwise known as the Gaussian distribution, represents a distinctive bell-shaped curve when a sample is plotted on a histogram. The normal distribution occurs when there are random factors that interact on the measure. And in a normal distribution, the majority of data points will have a measure that is similar to the mean, and the mean value is the center of the bell-shaped curve. On the other hand, fewer data points will have values much larger and smaller than the mean value. The width of the curve in the distribution corresponds to the standard deviation, with approximately 68.3% of values being within one standard deviation from the mean, 95.4% of values being within two standard deviations from the mean, and 99.7% of values being within three standard deviations relative to the mean. Did you like this video? 
be sure to give it a like or leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to be notified when a new video is added.